Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This week. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to cancel the departure. Engine troubles plague Buffalo's newest Electra. $29,000 repair. That didn't work. Joe's standoff with the feds. Friday. We shut her down on Friday. Threatens to close the airline. If he wants to destroy it, he can go right ahead. <laughs> and Joe faces a tough decision. What do you want to do? About his old dog, Sophie. Take it over. Out of your hats, boy. Six. A tug or mule towing a DC-3 to the cargo terminal just ran out of gas on a taxiway. They ran the tug out of fuel with the DC-3 block in the taxiway. Oh, good thing Joe hasn't seen this yet. Running out of diesel fuel in the middle of a taxiway when the 737's trying to move is what would my father say, very kindergarten-like? They rush in with another tug to haul the DC-3 off the active runway approach. Luckily, Joe has not found out about this yet, or he'd be out yelling and screaming. So we have to get this airplane locked, loaded, and secure. I don't know what happened to us. There's antifreeze leaking out of it, so. The taxiway, you know, it's an airport, it's busy. So we gotta make sure things keep moving. Can't have anything stopping in the way. Now, they're running late, and the plane still needs to be loaded and the cabin warm. One of his little tricks is he checks the seatbelts to see if they're warm. They're a little cool. So if I warm them up with my hands, if he checks them, <laughs> hopefully nothing else happens. 20 minutes before scheduled takeoff, Captain Joe arrives. How many you in for? Is that what you asked me? Yeah. Inside, Mikey and his sister Kathy are rushing to get the flight ready. Hey, I don't have express cargo yet. Yeah, yeah there's just still getting it. I'm by flight in 20 minutes. There's no heat on it and it's filthy. Yeah, they, your crew in there right now. They were, they were broke. They, they were stuck on the taxiway for the last 15 minutes. Well, they should have been out there an hour with 15 minutes. Well, they ran out of fuel in the tug. Well, that should have been done this morning. Why did they wait till the last minute? Who was yes. on the tug? Well, they all scattered when I was out there. I don't know exactly who was out there. Well, let's get let's get operational here. Outside, new rampy Dan Vino is trying to get the plane loaded so it can take off on time. They tell me this airplane's dirty and filthy and froze because we run out of fuel with a mule. Is that right? What's that? Did we run out of fuel with a mule? Yep, for what, five minutes. Why didn't you refill it this morning? I don't, I never refilled those mules before. You I never, never have. No, that's Who? not, I haven't, that hasn't been my responsibility yet. But how, about, how about the ground crew refilling the mules? I know it's not your responsibility, I don't do it either. Yep. But the f***ing thing runs out of fuel and I'm late. Yeah. I'm gonna come on to somebody, what's he doing? What are you doing? Yeah, I got it, yeah, I'll make sure it's full. That's what you want me to do. Never ends, eh? Hurry up. Okay, I don't know what you do. You want to work here? Well, as far as I know, I'm working well, here right now. Then come with me. I'm not putting up with this. Can I put up with my feet? You tell me you can't refill a mule. I never said I can't. I said I haven't been my responsibility. You want me to do it? I'll do it. And, and then you... when it runs out, you can give me shit. I'll take it. OK. OK? I haven't been asked to refuel that. I will. Come here. Okay. Who's in charge of these young mules around here? Why are we running out of fuel? With I don't know if we're we in one trip today. trip today. No, one down. trip today. Settle down. I won't settle down. No. I'm not going to be late with one fucking trip a day, and they blame the fuel running out. He said he doesn't do that job. Well, I said, I said, don't. What have you done all down. day? We've, been, we've, we've done one trip today. I've been doing a lot today here, Joe. There's lots. He's but, the one who works the hardest out of everybody. But you know what, Joe? Well, who's actually here? Where's everybody else? I thought you might know that. Oh, yeah. Is the fuel gauge working? Does it show it's full? 
Who knows? We don't know. Okay, just, 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 run out, just run it out of fuel. Don't refuel it every day. Don't refuel it every second day. Well, no. Don't check okay, it every no. day. I, I will We're getting it ready. Every day, and then huh? if it runs out, then give me shit. Yeah. All means. But I've been all day tied up in f***ing shirts. I expect my airplane ready. Don't expect to come out here 10 minutes before loading time find it frozen and dirty. And you say, well, we run out of fuel. Well, that's what happened. Well, then it should run out of fuel at noon. Well, if it would, then it wouldn't be a problem. Well, then why did they wait till fucking night? Who's in charge, you? Well, yeah. We'll get it done. Next morning, things get off to a brighter start with some special cargo. Hey, puppies. Oh, we got some dogs coming in for, I guess, the SPCA. One looks like a little Sophie. Joe's brought a shipment of dogs destined for the Yellowknife SPCA on the morning sked. Yeah? Okay. Put her down over here. You hear the dogs? <laughs> Did you see this one? Yeah. Take it out? No. One of them is the same breed as Joe's beloved dog, Sophie. So Kathy wants to show her dad. Quick, run with the puppy! Ah. But Joe's already got a dog. Smell like shit. Get out of here. Smell like shit. Smell like shit. Is she a male or female? Female. Yeah, I like you. I like got Sophie and Orange Cat. You nervous? I know. Sophie's been here 15 years the next month. I picked her up at a pond rescue place in Red Deer. I wasn't even looking for a dog. She was looking for me. So, oh, oh, Sophie, what was that? And then the last few years, of course, she she hasn't been able to to handle the um, that pace of life. So she's been in the hangar. You're not replaced yet, Soph. You still got a long ways to go. Two more years of work, and then you can retire. But two more years is a lot to ask of a 16-year-old dog. I imagine she'll be going off to that big dog house in the sky. You know, it's just a fact of life. So yeah, I don't know how it'll be. Back, you just grab one of these at a time. Outside, there's a more pressing problem. Let's grab this one here and just pull it back. They need to load cargo for a big client on a flight set to go tomorrow morning. Anywhere along here is good. Christ. But the Electra they need just landed with a broken engine. An engine head mechanic Chuck Adams just finished fixing. I got to get this all done as quick as possible so we can get this thing ready for tomorrow morning. Just stay in there. Just yesterday, he put a rebuilt regulator on engine number three. Of course, clearance to Electra, uh, Delta, Bravo to come around. The regulator on the Electra controls both the pitch of the props and the engine power needed to keep the blade spinning at a constant speed. The regulator is $29,000 repair. That didn't work. I've got one flight out of it. 
Chuck has another regulator in stock. I'll go get the regulator. But it's missing a few pieces. Good change prop, man. That's the one. Oh, oh. being a pussy. Just checking all the seals on the components. We need the old new O-ring. This one here is completely f***ed. You think oh, you're doing that? Yeah, I know they're all like that. What do you want me to do? Make it new? What a f***, please. We don't have big ones. We want to get small one. On f***ing real, we ordered them over two f***ing months ago. Can't be that f***ing hurt. Steal the O-rings out of this one. You may not see any bikini nuts around, eh? But these are kind of shitty looking, you know what I mean? A nut for the regulator. That's probably something we don't have. Everything is a fucking obstacle. I'm going crazy. I didn't bring the magic wand today, buddy. Across the hangar, Mikey's dealing with an even bigger problem. Oh, you know, transport's here right now. Uh, and they don't really want the cameras around. It's kind of a uh, touchy subject, so uh, I got to get in here. Sorry, guys. Earlier today, a carload of officials from Transport Canada arrived at Buffalo to conduct a surprise audit. The same thing happens every year. You don't have to prove, you prove to me, sir. I pay your f***ing wage, and you're the civil servant here. You prove to me. And with Joe, it can get ugly. You hear the witch hunt. You want my ass. This year, they arrive with an ultimatum. No more Joe. Appoint someone else to represent Buffalo by Friday, or get shut down. Transport's basically drawing a line in the snow saying, get out. But Joe's not budging. My father is uh, being my father. He doesn't like to be threatened or pushed into a corner. If anybody's going to close down his airline, it'll be him. He vents his frustration on his employees. You know you stand around, you got six guys standing around, nothing to do. I'm got, you know, the one standing around here. If you want to work, work. Why don't you go home? I don't want you hanging around here. Nothing like you're hanging around. I knew that was coming. I knew that this morning when that was coming. Just the mood he's in. Joel's going to play the game right to the bitter end, man. Why not? He built the f***ing company. If he wants to destroy it, he can go right ahead. It's his. We have 72 hours. So in 72 hours from now, there may not be a Buffalo Airways. It'll just be Buffalo parts and pieces. This winter, business has been slow. Yeah, come on in. Buffalo has been bleeding money. Good. We'll just take one at a time. Now, they finally have a big contract to fly building supplies to an RCMP detachment on Holman Island. Hey. But the Electra they need for the job is in the repair shop. Hey, folks. We know it ain't working because it ain't regulated. This is our slowest time of the year, and the Electra is our number one airplane. We got a big trip to Holman, which is a huge trip. We got to get them fixed. It packed it in. Who repaired it? I'm not really sure, but she's going back. Where's the paperwork on it? I'll get that all together for you. Oh, my. OK, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How the hell did that happen? Chuck and the crew have been racing to replace the regulator on engine number three since before dawn. Need a flashlight? If I need eyeballs, I can't even see what I'm doing. There. No more. You know, it's not delicate, eh? My finger's delicate. <laughs> I'm going to be dead by the end of the day. They still need to get the four-ton prop assembly back on the plane. Wheel her over to the engine there, bye. But all this work could be for nothing. This morning, Mikey is fighting for Buffalo's life. Behind closed doors, an audit team from Transport Canada is digging through flight records. They're demanding that Joe step aside as Buffalo's accountable executive. Only one boy can run the farm. 
Joe's not giving in. Bless Guinea Farmer, Canada. You gotta follow by the rules. You gotta conform. And conformity is a word my father didn't learn in school. He learned to get it done. You are fing it right now by not cooperating. We don't have a lot of options. No, we have one option is Rod takes over as the accountable executive. And that's it. With airlines, you have a president and you have an accountable executive. And if anything happens that is against regulations, the accountable executive is held responsible. And Transport Canada really never has to talk to the president. Look at it this way, from a business point of view, forget transport, forget rod, forget anything. We yes. don't have enough money every month coming in to cover our expenses. Do you want to shut down with $5 million in the hole, or do you want to shut down with $6 million in the hole? Said everybody home. Everybody here home. Everybody. Yeah, I have to. We're done. What's a big deal about being done? But you're not giving it a chance. I, what do I owe? You owe, you owe them to give everybody a fighting chance. Mike, it can't go on forever. No, it won't. You are pushing it to the very end. I can sell it. You, Friday. Are we shutting her down on Friday? We're sh shutting it down on Friday. That's Friday. Friday. Today's Tuesday. The they biggest the decision... They put the, get, they put the gun to my head. I didn't. But we... Rod is willing to step up. Joe isn't ready to turn Buffalo over to anybody, even his own son. Right now, it's shut the whole operation down on Friday. You know, 70 families that depend on Buffalo Airways. It's not up to me. It's up to the boss. Hey, Soph. Soph, he's off. Hey, Soph. Hey, Soph. You want to help up? You want to help up? Come on, Soph. You know, Sophie's having a bad day. Just like any other Buffalo Warriors employee. Yeah, pain in the ass, scruffy in hell. Come on, Soph. Come on. Toby's doing pretty good. You know, it's her 16th year and she's still going. And you couldn't imagine. She's been here half my life. Half my life, face off. So if I'm not itching you and this slippery floor, you'll just fall over again. I don't remember life really without Sophie being here because I would have been 14 when she showed up. Her days are numbered, but overall our days are numbered. Give her some food and rest her up. She'll get up and she'll be good. Hey, Soph, you're doing okay. At 10 o'clock, Chuck has the Electra back in service, three hours after it was originally scheduled to leave. I'm Buffalo Mule 332. Holy what else we got coming? But it still needs to be loaded with 50 tons of construction supplies for an RCMP detachment. It's not the easiest airplane for a construction load, eh? Oh, hey! hey! Jesus Christ! Coming straight to begin with! Hold up! Stop him right now, Eric! Get the Look! Stop! Mark, just out of the way. <laughs> Pretty exciting. Yeah, I almost got squashed. <laughs> Pretty cool. Here, give me the. I can. Uh, give me the. Okay, just hold up there. We'll get it from here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, perfect. Today, nothing is going easy. Oh! Wow! Hold up. You gotta yell more. <laughs> it's way more effective if you only yell once in a while. Because if you're nice most of the time, when you yell, people will listen. Whoa, David! 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 Take it off the pallet! <laughs> you pay attention to what I'm saying. God <laughs> yeah, damn! When I speak, you listen. I think Grant needs a group hug. I do not need a group hug. <laughs> the only passenger on today's flight is Carpenter Philip Urinchuk. We're going to redo the uh, RCMP detachment. 
Carpentry, painting, cell doors. Uh, this one's kind of heavy. It's 300 pound doors, eh? They finally top it off with an unusual piece of gear for the frozen north. We, we always get these loads, and there's always these random, odd things that get shipped up to the north. But for some reason, there's a canoe. Home Island really doesn't have a whole lot of uh, great canoeing. Well, I mean, it's, it's frozen three quarters of the year up there. Maybe they're going to do some whale watching or some seal hunting with that. I don't know. Kind of funny. At noon, the Electra finally taxis for takeoff five hours late. Good morning, Buffalo 1219 is a uh, Lockheed Electra on Delta. And we're at IFR to Holman today with Crest 1934. Buffalo 1219, you're clear. Clear for takeoff, 35 in the air, and uh, Buffalo 1219. Yeah, it was a little center, ready on the left. Ready in the right. All right, got the right sir. Oh. We wait for the beta lights to go out, usually takes a second or two. Yeah, got right, sir. Oh. They get a warning light for engine number three the same engine that failed yesterday. No. Not happening, eh? No. The light's not going out. We can't take off. Buffalo 1219 tower. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to cancel this departure. Not happening, eh? No. Hey, tell them we're coming back. Buffalo 1219. Buffalo 1219 tower. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to cancel this departure. The crew on an already delayed cargo mission is forced to abort takeoff and taxi back at minimum power. Buffalo 1219, is that about your best taxi speed there? Uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty much. There's a problem with the number three engine again. This could take an hour, it could take 10 minutes, it could take a day. Can you get Chuck to come out to the airplane, please? Tell him that we have a problem with, you know, the number three propeller. It's, the beta light's not going out. They're called a fucking dummy light. They never had them in the airplane when it first came out. And again, it's Dr. Chuck to the rescue. Working outside isn't easy when it's minus 20. What are you doing here? It's a bad day to shave my face, Ian. I should have left the beard on. What the fuck is this? Nobody's not doing anything. Really? This time, an indicator light that's supposed to go off didn't. Where are you going? Holman? Oh, aren't you lucky. This Probably the mic switch. I'm gonna go take another switch off for you. Okay. Whenever we start troubleshooting, we always start with the easiest things first. What we'll do is just put this switch on there, and we'll just try it like this. Yeah. Fucking worse shit. Will I get in there? Anything else to make it easier? Or what? Nah, I need my brain. <laughs> yeah, I love working with Chuck. I find it very entertaining. Come doing here with this shit. Turns out the problem is a brush block that sends power to engine 3's prop de-icer. I think it's screwed. Yeah, we got a new one right there. Well, I use the term new loosely. Get number three. Can't win. Hopefully almost fixed. We're not too superstitious about things in the aviation world, but we have had a, quite a few issues with this number three propeller system. I don't believe it's cursed. I mean, I believe it's old and, and you know, these things wear out and, and things do go wrong with, you know, 1960s and 50s airplanes. Hey, don't come back. Maybe tomorrow. Buffalo 1219 tower. Take off center in the air, Buffalo 1219. Another spare part is in place. Got a lot. Very right. The long delayed mission finally gets in the air. Do you want? Be two, pause it right Their destination today is Holman, a tiny Arctic settlement on the west coast of Victoria Island, also known by its Inuit name, Ulu Huktuk. Can we take a big bite of a sandwich and then try to say it? That sounds 
Yeah. South Bird on Hawk Yeah. yeah. Right here, Corey. Oh, Hawk Talk. Yeah. Hawk Talk. Hawk Talk. Hawk Talk. Radio Buffalo 1219, we're 22 back. That looks very advisory. Buffalo 1219, Roger, wind calm. No reported traffic. For runway surface condition 100% compact snow and gravel mix at 15 Zulu. Okay, we check all that. We'll call you final. 06 Buffalo 1219. Okay, you got the runway visual now? Uh, yeah, there's a challenge, there's a runway. You're down when I check the flop. Talk radio Buffalo 1219 is turning 3 mile final. It looks like we're really high, but we're not. Yeah, it does look like a flat approach, eh? Is that 500 horsepower across the Yeah. Yeah. On the ground, an RCMP officer is eager to find out if his mail order is on board. Uh, the canoe, that's uh, for personal use. Uh, we're going to use it here to go fishing in the summer to catch our char. And uh, there's a lot of small lakes around here for lake trout fishing. It's uh, pretty rare to get an airplane uh, this big, like the Electra, here in Ulohokto. There are only about 450 people that reside here. Well, what's your name? My name is Jerry Jr. Live life in the north. It's always fun. We go hunting, we go fishing, play ice hockey. I wouldn't change it for anything. Corey calls in the fuel truck, but there's a problem. The thing with the Electra is basically we're burning 5,000 pounds of fuel an hour. In order for us to carry full load, we have to basically buy fuel everywhere we go. Well, who's paying for the fuel? No account or nothing. Fueling have said it was all set up, but of course nothing was set up. The, the fuel guy was looking for some, some form of payment. Yep. Hey, uh, we're buying fuel in Holman with uh, do you have an account or nothing, or what? Yep. No, the guy says no. Um, I mean, the fuel is expensive. We're talking, you know, five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar fuel bills. Well, I don't. We yeah, we don't have an account apparently. It's just always something like this. Always a little glitch. Okay. And is your name? Is Michael McBride on it? Yeah. Okay. 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 No All right. Well, we got the fuel paid for. I use Mikey's credit card. <laughs> it's all good, yeah. yeah. Every time we go somewhere, drop freight off, it's, it's good, it feels good. You're, you're doing something. I know uh, Hawk Talk Radio Buffalo 1219 is on the roll. Places like Holman depend on us. They're only accessible by air. You know, they don't they can't just drive to the, the store. Once we get the job done, it feels good. Back at Buffalo, time is running out. Joe has only 24 hours left to step down as Buffalo's accountable executive, or Transport Canada will shut down Buffalo Airways. My father is, is we're not gonna beat around the bush. He's very hard to deal with, and he's very set in his ways. But at some point, it's not 1975 anymore. Elvis isn't on the radio anymore. It's, it, stuff changes. My school, they call it old school. I'm the headmaster of the old school now. Oh, she's getting down there a lot of days here. You know, 20 years ago, transport candidates, they were a little more sensitive to what I do and how I work and how I do it. But we wake up one morning and everybody's modern and, and we're still uh, running steam and shoeing horses, so that's the way it is. Times have changed a lot in aviation. The era of the guys getting in and getting it done is over. 
And the sooner, the sooner we realize that, I guess the better it is, you know? But for a fighter like Joe, the hardest thing to do is give in. Faced with an ultimatum that could shut down his airline, Buffalo Joe does something completely out of character. He gives in. He agrees to appoint his eldest son, Rod, as accountable executive. Accountable executive has regulatory control over the company. Now, essentially, he allowed someone else to take it, and that would be me. I volunteered to step back. He volunteered to step ahead. It's better to pass the torch on because rules and regulations are, are changing, and Rod was more in tune with them. Transports forced us to do that. Is it the right decision? Well, yes, because it has to be done to keep Buffalo Airways going. Uh, is it going to be smooth? No. We're always just trying to focus on safe operations as we see it. As far as Transport Canada is concerned, they develop a whole regulatory process, and that's a whole idea that never was done before. How's it all been going so far with the accountable executive role? And I don't even have a tie. <laughs> I'm responsible for all regulatory functions of the company. That's basically what it is. Full control right down to the pound of the airplane. Mm -hmm. Transport Canada's big complaint with Buffalo is that official procedures aren't always being followed to the letter. Buffalo is like the flu. The vaccine is Transport Canada, if you want to put it that way. And everybody's scared of fucking needles. Transport Canada basically wants to see compliance. It's time to go into the new era. All I gotta do is make sure everybody's doing their job and focused on what they're supposed to be doing instead of what we used to do. Yeah. It's gonna take a lot of work, but there will be no failures. Sophie, we're so With one crisis averted, Mikey shifts his attention to his ailing pet. Hey, look, so. Look what I got for you. I got you a new pet. Here. You can get up. Come on. Come on, Soph. Come on. Come on. Ah, there you go. Hey, Soph. Look at this. Come on. Come on. Come on, Soph. Come on, girl. Come on, Soph. Here, Soph. Fall under the bed. Fall under the bed. Oh. I don't know, Sophie. That bed might even be too high for you. Maybe I just have to let her do it naturally. Yeah, okay. Uh, it was just we, we... Hello? Okay, talk to Mike. Hey, Pete? That afternoon, a hockey team shows up at the last minute to fly the sked to Hay River, forcing Buffalo to put on a second plane. We got a whole crew of kids going to play some hockey, and uh, we got the other sked going out too, and then everyone going back to the river. So, got a double whammy here. What's the problem? When people just show up, no tickets. If you can't control that, I will put a fing limit on, and you'll have to say no. Rod's new way of running things gets put to its first real world test. Transport Canada regulations require them to weigh and record every bag. 69. You gotta prove how much all the luggage weight. You gotta, you know, separate male, female for weights. What major airlines do on a daily basis, the regulatory people, they're making us do. 026. No, it's not working. In the past, Joe would have just eyeballed it. You know, for years, the baggage sort of balanced off. Some people had no baggage, some had baggage, but all balanced out. Now, it all has to be entered into the computer. If there's a problem, like, we're weighing the bags wrong. This is ridiculous. Six, six, seven, one. If we don't solve that problem now, there's, the flight's not going out tonight. We just gotta figure it out, be calm, and hit it as we can. How much you got? Yeah, I do have one. Are you, are you tight? Yeah. Well, we don't know, because look how many people still online. Joe just wants his sked to leave on time. You see how many people are here? Yeah, I see how many people are here. All right. OK. You get transported in here, I'll tell them. I'll show them what all the f they're from around here. I know what the airplanes get hauled easily. My father doesn't want to do anything unsafe, but 
He's flown 16,000 times back and forth with generations of people. He knows what he's doing. You got 800 pounds. For once, Joe decides to keep his opinions to himself. What's left for the other airplane? How much for the other airplane? No, we're still good. We still got 1,500 pounds. Well, don't overload me too much. We'll shut this one down. 20 minutes late, they finally start to load the second plane. You know, tonight's the night. It's hockey night in Hay River, so. Hey, Sam, you want to give me a head count? We counted heads, we counted bags, we counted everything. So many of those airplanes are loaded absolutely perfectly by the book. 13 plus prep fire? Yeah, 13 okay. plus prep fire. And that's what we got to do in the new age of Buffalo Airways. It's a time of change at Buffalo Airways for everyone. Come on, so. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, girl. I didn't believe, I didn't want to see what I saw. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, so. Sophie was uh, underneath the King Air in the hangar and she couldn't move. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. And I went under there to try to help her. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on, get up. You can see it in her eyes. She just wanted to keep on going. She like didn't want to disappoint. She wanted to get up. and She wasn't really cranky or anything like that. She was just almost embarrassed that she couldn't work, and that's the way I took it. You see Sophie anywhere, Randy? No, I haven't seen her, no. She didn't come when I called her, when I couldn't find her. She was under the airplane. Not the worst I'd seen her. So? So Mikey laid in there and got her up on her feet. Oh, her back legs were given out from under her, and she couldn't get herself back up on her feet. When I went to uh, get her up, she was in pain and snapping at me, and she never snapped at me in 15 years. But she was snapping at me because I was hurting her, picking her up. And uh, I've been told by different people that understand dogs and veterinarians, I said, the dog will tell you when it's ready to go. That's a girl. That's a girl. Look those back legs go, come on. I, I knew the dog was telling me it's time to go. It was uh, sort of a, a decision that Mikey had to come to terms with too this morning. What do you want to do? What, does he give her a shot and then what happens? Yeah, he'll just give her one final shot. What is stitch. it? What do they give her? I don't know what he gives her, but it, it's something that painless, eh? What do you want to do? It's tough, you know? Sometimes your best friend's a, a blonde canine dog that, you know, just wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, leave the hangar. You know, she was just too rough, too much in pain. You know, it was, you know, it was time. Y'all like veterinary clinic? She never liked going to the veterinary clinic. The only place she didn't want to follow me was in there. And, and so uh, today, I wouldn't want to put her in the stress of going in that clinic. The veterinary doctor, he'll come here and do it in her space, which is very good. So that's the way it'll be. How long does it usually take? 
Six about between yeah. five and ten minutes. She won't even be aware of what's happening. She'll be so far into dreamland, she won't know, okay? You can hold her, you can pet her, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm just way back here, okay? Sophie? No more paint. Should have went out in the blaze of glory, Soph. How you know many trucks you must have got ran over by? Oh, shit. How many plane rides you're on? This appears to be sleeping, eh? Looks like she just get up and run away. How many hours do you figure she saw it in the DC-3? The DC-3, probably between eight and 10,000 hours. And probably about 80,000 hours sleeping in it. Wait for the next trip. Pretty lucky, eh? A pretty lucky dog. She got a lot of trips, a lot of time at the farm. She'll be missed, you know. Sophie's probably in the big hangar in the sky. We'll see her one day. For Joe, Sophie was a special dog one who lived all her life among his airplanes. So that's how she laid all day waiting. She laid like that for 10 years, all day long waiting for a ride. A special dog who was once sent a warning letter for wandering onto the runways of Yellowknife's International Airport. What does it say there? A dog reported belonging to you, ran across from 27. How long ago was that? That's 2000. That's 14 years ago. About the same time, they uh, they did a ramp check on me, caught me in the airplane without my shoulder harness on. So they asked me why I wasn't wearing a shoulder harness. So I wrote back and said, I used the shoulder harness to tie up the dog. The next morning, on. the vet returns with Sophie's ashes. Yeah, we got to get her, uh, give her back her ID here. She had the International Airport ID here. <laughs> if she finds out that uh, the big old uh, doghouse in the sky is an international airport, at least she'll have her ID. Because she was a treasured dog, we have a little treasure chest for her. This treasure chest will go on the shelf in my back office with uh, with Brandy and Angus and, uh, and Baby. She won't be alone on the shelf. Uh, all her buddies are there. So there, she's right in there with the good guys now. And and her and uh, her buddies and and old Angus here. I'll keep her keep her honest. Angus was a cat that grew up in Mike. He was 13 years with us. So there's her her resting place. She had a good life. So she goes with no regrets. The only thing I'm going to really miss is that, you know, I got to deal with people my whole life all day long, and late at night, I really like to see my dog. Buffalo Joe has spent much of his life resisting change and flying the vintage planes of yesterday. But Joe might finally be realizing nothing lasts forever. 